Hello everybody, it is your professor Rocco, your boy, coming at you once again with more Age of Sigmar videos. In this class, this general class, I'm gonna talk to you about we're gonna we're gonna slow down on all the tournament prep and everything for a second. I'm getting ready for Du Bois myself for a team tournament and the GT up there. But we we gotta talk about something kind of big because to me age of sigmar as a game is really a social contract it's a way to socialize to get out to game clubs and new stores and meet people and as we emerge from this covid era of we had to stay away from everybody we got to kind of focus back on well what's a friendly list what do we do how do i go to a game store and not become public enemy number 1 and make friends so, in this episode, we will discuss, you know, things that, what I think it makes a friendly list. Alright, now, now I know, hear me out, follow me camera guy. Rocco, you're a tournament teacher, dude. And, you know, but I love Path of Glories, I love narrative campaigns, I love taking fluffy, stupid things and, and going about my business. I do, I do, and I can win with that stuff. You know, I've, I've also dumb lucked into Stormcast over here being really, really strong. So if I'm going to a new store, you know, wh what do I take? So I, you know, I don't, you know, become persona non grata. And it's like I, I win a bunch of games and no one wants to play me anymore. Because I'm playing the, the filth of the month meta army. Maybe I'm a Lumineth Realm Lords player and you're like, okay. Everyone online hates my army. I'm starting to hate my army. Where where do you find the love for that again? And and how do you go about it? So you could actually express yourself on the table, have fun while playing games. And you know, you may not win every game, but we still don't want to lose every game. So where where's this balance come from? All right. Now now we're going to go over just really quickly my broad ideas and then I'm going to go and show you a list I came up with to give an example. You know, because I could talk and lecture and blah, 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 like a real professor. And it'll bore you out of your mind. But examples tend to help. So, the the first thing to me is, it, it depends on my collection. Like, when I first started collecting Stormcast, I didn't have a big enough collection to do something. You know, I, I bought, because I had a limited amount of funds to realistically buy a Warhammer army at 2,000 points to play with everybody and you know I wanted to still pick good stuff so I could go to events and things and not get thrashed while still having friends at my local store so it was a delicate type rope and one of the things I did was I had good units but I might not have a good sub faction for them or, you know, I might not pick the right artifacts on purpose. You know, I'd say I'd try something different. But really, it was just like a way to soften a list. You know, those extra rules we pile on to give us those extra little advantages and synergies on the tabletop. I'm not looking for those. And, and to be fair, if you've been watching this channel, you know how to look for those already because you, you I've taught you how to avoid them. You know, but in order to avoid something, you got to recognize that it's there. And in these more casual games, because, you know, it's like, hey, you know, I'm going to a store to meet people. I'm playing a, a casual pickup game with someone who's new to the hobby but has a good list. Or, you know, they're, they're just goofing around and neither of us wants to lose top of turn one. What do I do? Well, you kind of tank your list if you have a really really good units by getting rid of the extra stuff. You know, I'm not saying don't take a command trait. I'm just saying, you know, go go for one of the worst ones. You know, go for the worst sub faction that you could find. Some go for something that's not your playstyle that you're a little uncomfortable playing and then you challenge yourself to play it decently. So then you're still learning something new about your own faction and army while the other person is learning something about theirs. You know, it's okay to challenge ourselves and do different things for casual games. It's okay. You know, and on, on the other side here, if you don't have the most competitive collection, maybe you do go a little harder on the rules so you don't get stomped. You know, I remember there was a time with my Stormcast, the uh, the sequiturs that I had, I didn't have enough uh, the special weapons. 
to run the units how I needed to for events. So, you know, it was okay for me to be like, yeah, this is my collection. I'm going to play the best with what I have. I know I have limitations. But, you know, I'll fill in holes with, like, uh, endless spells that it would never normally take. To still, you know, take up some points or to just futz around and try new stuff. All right. So we're going to cut here for a second and then go right to a list that I came up with for Stormcast Eternals. See you in a second. Hello, we're back. Here we are. This is the army summary. I know it's going to be a little bit intense. But this is where we are. We've got a Stormcast Eternals, Anvils of the Helden Hammer, and a Storm Keep. So, in my mind, my more competitive builds that for the stuff that I own, I like going Signs of the Storm. So going Storm Keep and taking Cities units. Like I I own everything but this chariot, and that's the next thing on my buy list. Let me tell you. And if I'm going to a to a store like I said you know I'm taking two lists I've got my my tournament you want to come for the champ come get it list but I'm also taking you know, something like this where I'm bringing anvils of the Helden hammer which used to be in second edition the go to sub faction now it's a damage reduction thing that's a little bit it, it it's based on a dice roll you try to beat the opponent unit's bravery if you're nearby them in combat and you can ignore some damage coming your way. It's not going to always go off against like death and chaos. It might as well never go off. But it, something situational and swingy, it's okay for a casual game. And Stormkeep, not my normal uh, play style. Uh, you know, it's everything starts off on the table with Stormcast. There's no deep striking. I didn't even take a priest to teleport anything with. This is just like an honest game of Warhammer with a faction that doesn't necessarily like to play honest games of Warhammer. But I gotta walk up the board and punch you. Uh, I did take the grand strategy hold the line, though you will notice I've got a unit of five liberators and then two units of vindictors. Vindictors are the, the spear and shield storm cast that are very good. But again, this is stuff that I have, but that you know, if my collection is a little bit limited based off of, say, getting the Dominion box, these are some things that I have around. And then if I have some stuff from previous, you know, here we are. Uh, but in fives, they're good. They're, they're not going to win me a game on their own, though. You know, and then we go to my general is a Lord Arcanum on Griff Charger. Last week, we talked about Cycle of the Storm, which is great, which is good on these Stormcasts. Uh, oh, my triumph is inspired for plus one to wound, because that's always nice. Um, my general has the staunch defender command trait, the, the, the one that everyone laughed about. It's so bad I don't have it memorized, so I gotta read it from my book. Uh, staunch defender, you re-roll the dice that determines the number of mortal wounds caused to an enemy unit by a friendly stormcast redeemer unit using the, seal, the shield of civilization battle trait said those two words together if the unit is wholly within 12 inches of this general so again it's a very circumstantial thing that only three of my units can even use and we move on you know we've got the mount trait celestial instincts which should be the extra six inch pylon there or to have a six inch pylon where yeah that's great uh i don't want an arcanum in combat though so again that's that give and take it's nice, it's not something that I would need, but it's nice. I'm taking the spell Thundershock, which again is a bit more of a situational kind of spell, where I have to roll to see if it even goes off. You know, it's Thundershock is a spell with a casting value of 6 and a range of 12 if it's a knight, 18 if it's a lord. We have the lord. Uh, roll a dice for each enemy unit in range, invisible to the caster. On a three up, subtract one from wound rolls for attacks made by that unit until your next hero phase. And you're like, Rocco, that sounds really good. Well, yeah, well, first I gotta cast it, and then I gotta roll the three up. And if you followed me at all for the past, uh, gosh, maybe six months we've had this channel, we're doing really good for that. I have a hard time rolling a two. I really do sometimes, so threes, that's rough for me. 
Um, and also, I'd probably be casting a Mystic Shield anyway. But it's a spell to have. And my Knight Arcanum there has a spell Chain Lightning for a little bit of damage. But again, it's a Knight, so it has a 12-inch range, not the Knight's 18-inch range. And again, it's, you know, I roll the dice, they take D3 Mortal Wounds, and then I roll a 3-up on the stuff nearby and see if I hurt it. I've got to be danger close to use it. It allows more counterplay for my opponent. Oh, it's nice. Also, I uh, I chucked in the Celestine Vortex there. Celestine Vortex, however you want to say it. I've got uh, Adeptus Sororitas on the brain. Uh, with the, the Hammer Tornado spell. It's nice, but again, not going to win me the game, and it was a nice 80-point buffer as a way to soften my list. My third hero is a Knight Quester with the artifact Hammer of Might. Which, on a 6 to wound, I do double damage. The Knight Quester is not... He, it's never been a good character. Really, it should have just stayed in the Silver Tower game. But, I own two, and I love the model. And it's one of those things where, you know, my Knight Quester can feel like the hero it wants to be. And it's also a melee artifact. You know, it's not the mirror shield where they can't shoot me unless they're within nine inches. It's not even the bleed damage of the fr of the Fang of Dracothian, which can feel kind of like a feels bad man moment because it's just take a mortal wound end of each uh end of each turn. Watch your hero, your beloved thing, slowly tick down instead of just being ripping the band aid off. And for these casual games, too, one of the things that make them fun is you're more focused on killing the stuff. You know, and you're telling stories through that. Yeah, we're playing Age of Sigmar with the objectives and stuff, but, you know, that time where, like, I charged in and they unleashed hell and they just murdered my ten wild riders as a charge of the Light Brigade is going to be a lot more of a story than, oh, Rocco beat me by, like, 20. You know, they're going to remember the killing more than they're going to remember losing half the time. And it's okay to lose games yourself, people. I know, sacrilege. My my fourth hero is a Lord Ordinator. So I have one with a Grand Hammer, which isn't actually as good as the Double Hammers now, because you'd rather be fishing for sixes to hit. But there's a funny thing here. The, I, and I have the Ordinator, and I've got the two Ballistas in the Grand Battery Battalion. Ballistas are averaging seven shots each on a rapid-fire profile, where before you could play the lottery and get, what, 6, 12, 24 shots per ballista, and that happened way more than you'd think. Their damage output just really ain't there if you're doing the rapid-fire profile and using them as sniping tools. Maybe. Maybe. If you, you want to bet on a D6 damage roll, you know, that, and we're also not deep striking them in, so they're not going to be automatically shooting people at their best profile or at a good profile or at all. So I'm okay with this. You know, it's a way to soften my list where I still have damage. We're still playing the game. I still have some shooting. It's still a threat, but my opponent won't feel overpowered or say it's op or you know it's it's not six long strike raptors where i own nine myself i'm not bringing those are in the those are in the tournament list we don't talk about those in this kind of a thing right now you know and then for my battle line i've got a unit of five liberators uh i do own five with one grand hammer that's going to be on the prime that's how it's modeled then i've got two units of vindictors i got from the dominion box and then for my normal units, I have two units uh, from my Cities of Sigmar collection. So I had Free Guild Guard with Spears when they were Empire State Troops with Spears. Because I swear in like 5th or 6th edition um, fantasy battles, there was a reason I took Spears over Halberds or Swords. And I eventually got 20 Swordsmen, which I use in my competitive list for Living Cities. My spearmen do not see the light of day at all. And they're, I love the models. They've got the cool round shield with the lion on them. I've repainted them up, rebased them. They're great. And this is, again, it's a 5-up save. It's 21 attacks out of the unit. We're not breaking the bank here with anything. 
I, I don't even think they have rend. You know, if they get charged, they get a buff, but they're gonna die anyway, so you never get to use it. But they're fun when you do. And another thing, they die. Going back to your opponent's gonna like the game, and they're gonna feel into it if they're a new player that doesn't know what they're doing, if they're killing stuff. Wild Riders, that can be a hammer ridiculously swingy. Well, they're in a reinforced unit, so they've got the bad coherency. Then if I took them as a five as two fives, which honestly would have been better. But, you know, I could still probably get like seven or eight in with the the, the lances. They should have long range there, but I believe two inches. And they're a good thing for me to use the triumph on if I do need to, say, put up the pressure and actually do damage with something. Because the the lances hit hard when, when they charge in. And, you know, they're a hammer unit for me. And then I've got a unit of three uh, prosecutors with hammers. Speaking of more hammers, uh, one of them is modeled with a great axe because I did a conversion where I could magnetize the base to either be uh, a Knight Azeros, which now is horrible for my city's army, don't work anymore, or uh, keep it as the prosecutor because it, it's cool with the axe. It's like a little executioner floating around. And, you know, if they can eat and unleash hell. They can go duel a hero on the power level of my Knight Quester if my opponent happens to have one. They still serve a purpose, and they're still a good screen. And then I've got a Storm Strike Chariot because that's still a really cool freaking model. You know, it's only the singular model. It's got a lot of wounds, so it, it counts a bit better for holding objectives. And it, it does have the impact hits to give me some mortal wound output in this list besides my spells. And I say that because if you run into someone that's a new player running a spell dom list like Techless or Croak in the Sallies and they've got mortal wounds left, right, and center, I'm not trying to lose every game. I still need some good stuff here. Is it the best stuff? No, but it's still good. It's still functional. You know, I've got the 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 two ballists in there again for some shooting. I've got the storm strike chariot to be a pinning piece. My opponent, especially if they're learning, still has to learn to play around some of these things, and I can give them an, an honest and fun game where they can learn to get better if that is the goal, or we can drink beer. Or do shots, or I don't even drink that much, so it's probably water for me. But you know, it's, you see me at the boys, and I'm probably gonna be three sheets of the wind because it's like, hey, YouTuber, do a shot, which is always cool when that happens. Don't don't get me wrong, but I digress. So this is a kind of list that still has threats. It's just not as scary, and it's not as easy to play well, and there's not as much margin for error, you know. The it, how I play Stormcast personally, this isn't my play style normally. Um, I am working on a on a uh, a list for the Hallowed Knights that I hope to run for the next competitive year. When that season starts after my living sitting, I'm gonna give them a break a bit, but I'm they're still getting painted, they're still getting done up. All this is playable for me. I could throw this out on a table and feel okay. You know, if it's like a new player at a store that I'm going to, they bring out Gloom Spite Gits as their welcome army. This is what I bring. You know, and the, the Celestine Vortex there, Celestial Vortex, I, I, that, that's how often I've used it. I used to love the Everblaze Comet, but now it's bad. I just couldn't fit it. I'd be 10 points over. Uh, Celestian Vortex here. It's a predatory spell. Can move 8 inches and fly. After the spell has moved, the commanding player picks one unit that has any models. It passed over and rolls 12 dice. For each 6, they take a mortal. Uh, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made with missile weapons for units that are within 6 inches of this endless spell. It has no effect on Stormcast units. Generally, what's going to happen is if anything can shoot, they're just going to walk away from this. That's it. You know, like what? Like, elves move six inches. So they, they have the movement to get out of there. If it's like LRL, the, the bow snakes move, I think, eight? Maybe. I don't know. They're snakes. They're, they're like light cav on their own there. They're, they're hauling. Um, 
you know, it might mess up a city's player, and again, maybe Graz. Yeah. But okay, that's two armies. It messes up. <laughs> it's a nice use of eighty points. It's a beautiful endless spell. I like how I painted mine, where it looks all purpley with magic whipping off of the the hammers. I don't get to use it. And then we we go to the core battalions, where I do have a Hunters of the Heartlands battalion for the Wild Riders, the Free Guild Guard, and the Chariot. So the reason I have that is because again, I'm I'm not throwing away the game. I know my Free Guild Guard would hate to be roared, and the same with the Wild Riders, and I know both units would hate to just take free mortal wounds and the chariot would just love to again not get stomped and chewed down because it's such a good piece at a three up save while the wild riders and the free guild guard with spears there they're five up saves they're gonna die anyway so i'm trying to like charge in with wild riders um hit with them the chariot also charges in hopefully it mortal wounded something on the way in and weakened it it can take the hit back and then, you know, when my opponent charges in, they saw the damage my Wild Riders did, and they also charged my Spearmen, so they're going to fight the Wild Riders. My Spearmen have an actual fighting chance if they get to fight, which never happens, but, you know. <laughs> and then that's the game, and then that's the fun of it, and that's how it works. And then the, the Liberators and the Vindictors can just try to survive long enough while the rest of my army crumbles. And, and it's fun. I have fun playing it. My opponents generally have fun playing against it because it's not a shoot cast list from from your. It's not um, Gargants where they just can't kill them and they just stand there laughing at them, putting their models in sacks. You know, and you get to see Free Guild Guard with Spears, which people probably haven't seen anyone use them since they were Empire Troops 20 years ago. And Wild Riders, which I actually was able to get the old, like, I think they're like 4th edition fantasy ones, maybe 5th. The ones from, like, when I was, like, 9 or 10 that I just couldn't afford at the time with my paper route money. As an adult, I have them, and this is the kind of list where I bring out a, a, a loved unit that I could have fun with. And for me, that's the best part, too. I'm just having fun talking about this list. I want to go play this list. And I know it's not good. I know Oops All Dragons will just smoke this. Like, in a second. I know my Stormcast list with the, the six long strikes will just tear this up. You know, double tapping with those bad boys. That's okay. Now, this is a list that, in a tournament, maybe goes two and three if I'm lucky with my matchups. You know? But if I want to have a fun time and I'm meeting new people and I'm, I'm not trying to be a dick... You know, this is the kind of thing I'd bring. You know, it's a sub-faction that isn't crazy. It's a grand strategy that's doable. But everyone's taking it anyway. You know, my heroes aren't some overpowered thing. My artifact is on a knight quester of all, of all people. Don't tell him I said that, but... Um, and... You know, I do have good units and Vindictors. I'm not using them in the good way. I'm not backing them up with an, enough hero support, really. My damage is coming from Wild Riders. Let me let that sink in for a minute. Um, and, you know, maybe the two Ballista all of a sudden do what one Ballista does in second. But you know what? They're just kind of bad. For 140 points. And that's okay. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, in the comments here, because I want you to write some things here, you know, how do you feel about uh, making fun lists? You know? Not going for the filth. You know, some, some beer and pretzel hammer, as they call it. You know, go, go to the pub, knock a few back. You know, it might be soda water for some, tea for others, IPAs, you dirty, I mean, lovely people. Uh, and you know what? What's your what are some of your favorite units that aren't good but you love them and you wish you could use them? You know, like for me, it's Wild Riders. What is it for you, viewers? And like, subscribe, 
Thank you for watching, and I'd like to say at the end of all of our classes here, class dismissed. Bye.